Greetings, my friends. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here back in TNO playing as that beautiful Union. That beautiful Union. But right now, it's June 19th. Now, basically, we had yesterday's episode, but I wanted to somewhat retry it and see if I could actually capitulate the enemies down in Grof Gross Afrikanische Reichstadt, as well as do a better event for the Goa event. Um, so basically, I replayed it just a little bit, and actually, things have sped up a little bit faster than normal. So, basically, Indonesia has had some problems, and we have uh, we were trying to get prisoners that were captured on Timor in yesterday's episode, but this is just a continuation of what's happening, and apparently, Japan said like they escaped or something. So, regardless, uh, we'll talk about a little bit more of that when we get and talk about what happened off screen. But let's do this event first. <clears throat> Indonesia claims prisoners escaped. We've been informed that we will not be able to retrieve our prisoners. It's no matter of payment, but they are gone. They have unfortunately mustered a breakout from the prison, according to Indonesia. They killed 27 men and wounded four more on their way out. Much to the regrets of Indonesia, they've not been able to find them. Given the island of Timor, it is probably that they didn't make it out alive. Even if they were, they're certain to have made their way off the island to parts unknown. Worse, it is estimated that a significant portion of the former garrison have engaged in terrorist activities following their prison outbreak. outbreak. While it is a potential lead on their location, trying to ever get them back as a distant dream. What? So yeah, remember yesterday, Japan took over East Timor during World War II, and then Indonesia basically took it over now. It is what it is, you know. Uh, but let's talk about this. So I tried to do this, and actually we were pretty successful in making more South Africa get more territory, I guess. But we still had the stalemate, so basically nothing really happened here except these guys got more territory, that's it. That's literally it. Um, other than that... Not really much else has happened. I just wanted to make sure that with that India deal that we I did, uh, yesterday's video, we did the India deal, or the Goa deal. It was okay, so I went back and made sure that we got a better option. I tried it actually only once, and basically we had a little bit more stability from that, but we still right now have some uh, people to deal with. Yes, yeah, some people to deal with, and it was recommended that I do my best to crack down on all activity probably first, because that'll tell us, ooh, oh, ooh, actually we can already commit actions. Due to the increased precautions, actually will have a severely diminished effect. Ooh. It's not possible to destroy them yet. As the total cost to weaken both and strike their leadership is 26 AAS resources. Huh. Um. Strike their leadership is 20 resources. Wow. So, official statement from the government. Featured in the state press on the front page of the newspaper was a damning accusation in bold capitalized letters that read, Godless foreigners kill Iberian citizens. The article itself is no less damning, far lo far longer than the usual news article. It spared no detail on the crime crimes Indonesia committed on the former garrison of Timor, of which was very painstakingly described by Iberian, not Portuguese. It was described as Iberian. The piece launched into the history of, or of how the garrison was captured, then to the offense to the offense of human decency, where uses human labor <clears throat> for menial projects. Because of the total mistreatment of the government, they died alone, far away from home, and were never to be see their families again. Sadly, there was no proper explanation for the mistreatment, other than sheer cruelty. All this was topped well, off of the warning to never let any foreign power take you prisoner, or else this would happen to you. It's Indonesia's false. Oh! They worsened Salazar's... Okay. That was unexpected. Even though, you know, Franco's still leading, but that's okay. So expanding our stuff here. And, let's see... The silent majority leans towards Franco. Well, probably not for long. And we're still 87.5% way towards the dam. The workers are upset. It is what it is. So if this is the case, colonial settlers, uh, mostly, we could probably have the military kind of shy off a little bit, remove corrupt Spanish officials in Portugal. Bureaucrats. Bureaucrats don't really care. Basque religious leaders. Ooh. Despite critical, uh, rooting out terrorism is pretty important to do. This will decrease CNT support. I like that. Decrease ETA support. Intellectuals. Natives. Ooh, we can decrease their supplies. That might not be bad. Franco's foreign leaders. They don't really have a preference. They don't really care. Increase support. Wait, why would we do that? Oh, increase in minority regions. That might not be bad. Probably not good, though. Worse than silent majority. They lean towards us. Uh, symbolic concessions. Let's try that. So, the comment, there's a couple comments from yesterday. One saying that we have to be careful about the, this whole terrorism thing. Um, <clears throat> eventually, there's going to be a council called stating that 
we can like incorporate people of different groups into like elections and stuff <clears throat> which includes maybe even like regions that have terrorist organizations so we gotta be careful I, I really just want to destroy the terrorists to be honest with you I want to get rid of them immediately but master of the dead prisoners organized for an upcoming Sunday a number of Catholic priests had prepared a special service for the now deceased Timur Garrison sensing in its nature as an easy publicity stunt the Iberian government quickly latched onto the affair with the backing of the government it cost us no object what was once a small ceremony slowly morphed into a countrywide holiday it was hosted in many churches around Iberia and everyone who was able to attend was encouraged too the idea that some would not be able to was happening was a happening that was prepared for even if it was for a small few the ceremony would be televised and anyone from around the country who wished to watch was able to as for the morning itself it was exactly as it could be expected it was a solemn and quiet event this involved the involved priests were as if it was their own parents and brothers that had died and everyone carried themselves with the dignity that could bring back the dead if such a thing was possible Descanis and paz probably rest in peace cool we're doing that uh, if we can add any more money that'd be great we're going to buy more electrical equipment right now we're definitely trying to reduce the maintenance cost for the dam and we're trying to raise worker salaries as well, which will happen in 16 days, compared to installing all this hydroelectric generators uh, in 21 days, and that's in 27 days, so that's not too bad. Okay, so now the foreign leaders lean towards Franco, which is not ideal. Hmm. Basque teenagers caught vandalizing. News of another display of separatist activity has been relayed internally by the Accentia. A pair of rebellious youths have had the audacity to attack the Bilbao AAS branch office with rocks and other small missiles while chanting freedom messages in the process of smashing multiple windows and allegedly even causing minor wounds to a female secretary. The teenagers, both believed to be the age of 14, were immediately apprehended at the scene to be taken in for further questioning. The president has that this attack could set for more daring dissatisfied separatists as yet to be seen. Disgraceful display of our education system. Or not just education, it's probably just parenting too. The parents might be actually, might be, might welcome that as well. So you never know. Could be education system, maybe, maybe not. Got plenty of fuel though. Actually, you guys, you guys could probably train if you needed it, but it doesn't look like it. That's no, for you. Teenagers die in custody. Oh wow! <clears throat> the ashen yet calm police chief slowly descended down the cracked stone slabs of the station, with every nearing step to the Grand Oak entrance doors increasing the blasting cacophony of voices and screams outside. With a quick pause and steady breath, he opened them to the unwelcome greeting of the harsh camera flashes and unintelligible questions. Raising his hand to try to soften the den, he went over the message he had to relay again, already gritting his teeth in anticipation of what was to follow. The tragic death of the two youths who had vandalized the station in Bilbao, only to be arrested immediately on the scene, was a travesty. Local police had been due to transfer the delinquents into custody to await trial, only to find both had died under mysterious circumstances while being detained by AAS agents. Without having the full consequences in consideration, the transferring officers had contacted the family of the deceased soon after. If word about this incident spreads, its initial ripples have the potential of turning into full shockwaves, ready to incite social devastation upon the already teetering union. You fools, what have you done? I don't know if it was them, man. I'll be honest. I'm not really sure if it was really the officials. It might have been another nation, maybe. All right. How, how is this looking? I don't think there's really much that we can really do here. Oh, they got a little more supplies, huh? All right, supplies that cost two. Has severely diminished effect. Rise and build bowel. So be it. The lazy summer sun, lazy summer sun, warmed the already cracking roof tiles of a town in total uproar, creating an almost amazing contrast to the chaos on the streets of Bilbao. Large mobs had gathered with numerous posters and signs of crime and supposed injustice committed against the two recently deceased youths and their families. Their angry march had taken them right into the arms of waiting riot police and who had seemingly little sympathy with protesters while they quickly dismantled the gathering. Numerous ringleaders and those who resisted were arrested without delay, likely not helping a situation that already was beginning to influence the national consciousness. Oh boy. Alright, so let's close this and open it back up. So that was the ETA that has... Oh. And we shall break them. So we have more s stability. Good. By baton. Add more resources to combat them. By trial. By radio. Lower the support of separatists for a short period of time. Support is pretty, still pretty low overall. So let's do by baton. After weeks of planning, investigation, and analysis, we can finally strike back at the terrorist threat. Using information gathered from informants, check us, and wiretaps, the AAS <clears throat> had identified hundreds of key terrorist elements and is ready to execute mass arrests on command. In the dead of night, the Falangist anthem, Kara Al Sol, will be played on the radio stations throughout the country. That will be the signal to start their arrests. GAL operatives will take care of the most dangerous targets, while the lesser risk warrants will be served by the AAS officers. This move will show them that this land is ours, and that we will wipe them clean. Wipe clean the scourge that is solely our peaceful Iberia. That's actually really good to do, yeah. 
It's not vulnerable. I want to get rid of them. Please. But it seems like we just have to give it time. Our money, money wise, we're not doing terrible, I guess, you know. Let's close that first. Let's see. Yeah, 1.2. We're still at 1.2, which is not bad. We're still building up another military factory and some civilian factories. Tanks looking a little bit better, not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Alright, let's see. Worse than bureaucrats. Yeah, I don't know. Can Salazar make a mistake again? I would love him to. Military's still fully Franco aligned. Businessmen, intellectuals. <clears throat> let's see. Hmm. CMT support. <clears throat> and I do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm. Very good. <clears throat> All right, by baton. All right, my friends, sorry about that. I had to go clear my voice out because, well, it's getting a little scraggly there. But anyways, by trial. The trial of the century will be hosted in Madrid with two dozens of the vilest terrorists on the planet standing in front of the Supreme Court at a special national security session. More than 150 witnesses, encompassing government officials, bombing victims, and the so-called soplones. Terrorist turncoats who will cover their faces and testify against their former comrades in exchange for immunity will be ready to give their testimony on the pr prosecution side. News outlets from all of Europe and beyond will be covering the event, including a team from the New York Times, led by famed reporter Hannah Ardent. Arendt. Cameras will be placed around the pulpit, transmitting the full session with live commentary by loyal journalists. The defendants will be held in a soundproof glass cage in the middle of the courthouse, responding to their questions with a, using a microphone which can be muted if the plaintiff tries to use the trial as a soapbox. Most of the suspects will be sentenced to life imprisonment, and the worst of them all being given capital punishment. With this show of force, we aim to deter further terror attacks. Good. Very cool. So we honestly probably don't have to do this too much. Yeah, I don't want to lower any more of Franco's support, so. And anything out there doesn't really seem beneficial. Gibraltar Dam, anything else down here? Oh, yes, add a million to the budget. It's only one million now. Hey, they're content, though. That's good. That's good. 95! We're so close to finishing! So close. We need to touch the power plant, though, probably. Because all we're doing is buying more electrical equipment and getting cranes, which is nice. But, oh boy. Oh boy. Workers' quarters. Oh, yes. Add it. Add it. This decreases the wor anger's workers, but they're... Anger's workers? Workers' anger. Uh, we could do that, but I'm really going to wait for this. We just need one million more. Come on. So... We just finished that one focus. How do we get decisions to do stuff? Oh, well, there goes Germany. I believe Borman did win, right? They got a lot of support. Regional crackdown. Current A. We got a lot of resources. 21. Nice. Poland Feldzung. Well, I'm so sorry, Poland. Good luck, man. Good luck. Better better them than us, though. Total cost to weaken them and strike the leadership is 48 resources. Wow. That was quite a bit. Well, there comes the general government government back. Ooh, AAS infiltrates large CNT cell. To say that she looks shifty was an understatement. Quite frankly, her whole body felt oddly out of place walking down the shoddy wooden stairs to the hidden cellar entrance, letting her eyes felt, uh, flit momentarily onto her guy just behind her. She was taking... She was again taken aback by how innocent and normal these people look. She could have maybe been a school teacher. Likely actually was. Academia was starting to be filled with these people. The pair stopped at a heavy door blocking the view of what sounded like a relatively large meeting room, larger than what you would expect to find under a regular storefront. Without further thought, the undercover AAS agent let herself in. With this extremely fortunate infiltration of a large anarchist CNT terrorist group, the Ar government security agency has been able to finally map out further plans of a revolt and also gain insight into their high morale. With the periodic victory of government forces, it should come as no surprise that the rebels feel emboldened in future actions. Their movements will continue to be monitored. A lucky catch. Is that a good thing? That we got more support? Or... Hmm. CNT FAI. Hmm. Apparently one of these groups... Uh, there's a lot of uh, workers... Or not workers, but factions within Spain. Apparently one of them still exists today. Like Asturias, Asturias Workers Front or something. So, kind of cool. By radio. A car bomb went off in the all-girls Secret Heart School uh, in Belbao, murdering 19 schoolgirls who were playing in the yard and wounded many more. Forensic experts quickly analyzed the scene and discovered that the explosive used was a famous Goma 2, ETA signature weapon. The nightly news was fully dedicated to the bombing, interspersing footage from the victims, with the image of Dona Maria del Carmen, Franco's lovely wife, crying when she received the terrible tidings. The close segment depicted two men in white masks in front of the 
a Krenya flag reading a statement. The ruling classes are refusing to socialize their power and wealth, and because of their avarice and short-sightedness, the ETA is beholden to socialize suffering. I don't know, man. That seems kind of a bit extreme. But on the next day, vigils honoring the dead children were spontaneously made throughout our whole union, even in the Basque neighborhoods. <clears throat> and many mourners chanted, Asianos, Asianos, a photograph taken by El Correo of a guard yet civil hugging a wounded schoolgirl touching the world and was even nominated for a Pulitzer Prize. With this operation, we scored our first major propaganda coup against the terrorists. We need to keep up with these actions to further erode the enemy support among the local populace. Yeah, I don't know. Spread propaganda, good. Lowering support for the separatists for a short period of time. Yeah, I don't know, man. Attacking schoolgirls or just, you know, kids in general, mm, I, I'm not really sure. Expand funding, aw, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, this would doesn't do much for us. So I'm not sure when the best time to strike is, because I, I just want to get rid of them, but they're not vulnerable. <clears throat> if anything, it seems like the ETA is really gunning for it, followed by the CNT. It's, four, four, seven. it's not yet possible. Cost one resource. To, well, let's, let's lower by one, maybe. Okay. Can we do it again? Okay, that's greatly diminished effects. The Indonesian War. We prefer independence with poverty to servitude with plenty. The Pacific. All right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I can't invest in there yet. So be it. All right. Uh, I don't know if I can send volunteers, could I? Oh, they don't have a lot of stability. Let's see. We don't really like each other. We don't really care for each other either. Yeah, I can't send volunteers. Which is fine with me. Yeah, I don't want to get involved down there. Oh, there goes the big old African group. Now, maybe he's back. Huh. Okay, cool. Cool, very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, still can't invest. Still can't invest. Combating terrorism. By radio. Redirect military. Oh, we need more. Wait, we need more. Do we not have enough infantry equipment? What the heck? What do you mean we don't have enough infantry equipment? Go and do that. Do that. Maximize guns. Artillery, even do that too. Do that too. We need as many guns as possible. By radio. Everything is under control. Everything is alright in Iberia. Our workers toil away in their offices and factories, safe and assured in the knowledge that the state is there to protect them from the terrorists. Their sons and daughters sit happily at the school desks, the guards outside the school gates, there to keep them safe. The Villitos enjoy the warm weather, sitting placidly about park benches, watching the birds sing, and no longer think about Barcelona. And above all of them, perched on every lamppost, the roaming eyes of the AAS watch them, ready to call upon the gentle hand of the Guardia Civil at the sign of first trouble. The events of recent weeks have put fear into the hearts of many Iberians, but it's time to move on from worrying about the phantom of terrorism. Iberia is safe and secure, locked tightly and lovingly in the hands of our adored Cadillos. We've done that all we can all do for now. We must move on to more drastic reforms. Yes. Uh, so this comment from yesterday saying that, you know what, maybe I should not have sent tanks in to, uh, for the Battle of Barcelona. Ooh. Hungry goes in isolation? Okay. I don't think I've seen that before, but cool. But yeah, uh, we should maybe not have sent tanks in. Or we should have we should have sent tanks in instead of shelling the entire city. Maybe that would have been better. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe. So, ooh, ah, there we go. Nice. Throw it in there, and we could increase worker security. But you know what? I think that's pretty much all we need to do. Everything's under control. Great. With a budget boost in military austerity. Mm hmm. You know, at this point, uh, as much as I love the budget boost. I think we're doing okay. We have we still have th lines of three. That's still pretty good. I don't think we need to invest any more in the budget for now. I think it's okay to leave it like that, maybe. So let's go to cut down spending here, but keep an eye on that. So we just finished that. Resource efficiency gain, uh, max factories in estate, production efficiency cap, output. Let's grab some output. We could re probably really use output. You know what? That is but a number, right? Ah, screw it. Let's do it again. One point three two. Last time, that's the last time. So hundreds in Lisbon protest against Spanish dominance. Oh boy. This is, appears to be caught by Franco's significant influence in the Union. He has significant influence? Banners of resistance l wave lazily in the soft Lisbon breeze as a few hundred anti-Union protesters gather to voice their opposition to Portugal's continued participation in the Iberian Union. The rally is small, barely gathering the attention of the local residents trying to enjoy the holy day after the usual weekly Sunday Mass. The few officers that are standing loosely around the dwindling mass of angry voices snicker every now and then and to each other. 
Yet the significance of this event should not be underplayed. A new and more significant separatist faction has now been added to the already brimming list of previous problems concerning autonomy and the Union. This issue will need, need attention in the long term to make sure that it does not fester from a small, localized infection into a great epidemic. Oh boy. Oh boy. Actually, you know what? I still like this, at least, even with that boost. Uh, let's, let's go over here. We're still getting more oil. Oil's nice. Actually, we're doing really well in rubber. Hmm. You know what? Let's lower us by one. Thank you, America. I love it, but let's make it one more here. Just one more. Uh, where do we have 100% infrastructure? We have it down here. Eh, and a, and Dalusia. I don't ever want to pronounce that incorrectly. Cool. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta get more guns. That, that's unacceptable. We gotta get more guns. Come on. Still get 1.89 political power rate. God dang. We have no focus, though. Not yet. It sucks the Iberian Council assembles. So, the streets of downtown Madrid roar with life as the great halls of the Iberian Council are packed to the brim with the legislatures. Every man among the crowd is eager to weigh in upon the complex economic discussions anticipated for this assembly of the Iberian Council. Political blocs from across the Union, both great and small, have ensured that their representation within the Assembly will be set at an absolute maximum. It is time for this landmark Assembly of the Iberian Council to commence. The Assembly opens with the usual legislative formalities, and a quorum is called without a hitch. Shortly after, the caudillos make their appearance in an awkward tandem as they address the Council. The two leaders engage the Council with tall talk of economic prosperity and national greatness. The general reception of their speeches, however, garnered a little more than a subdued applause. Following several ungainly speeches shared nearly equally between the Franco and Salazar, the two leaders jointly call the deliberations of the council to an open. Cool. Alright, and meeting or extraordinary council meeting. Finally, the so-called Battle of Barcelona has reached its conclusion. The Separatists lay dead and under or under arrest, demonstrating without a doubt the ability of their armed forces to quell rebellion. However, there's something else occurring. The Caduillos are worried not because of the battle itself, but because of the idea that it could have, could have happened at all. If something this large was able to slip under their noses, then what else could have? They do not have the grip they used to maintain. For the sake of the Union, that must be rectified. In order to do that, however, they must know where to start. That is why an extraordinary meeting of the Council will be called, so that a decision may be met on how to fix this mess. Oh, okay, that auto is completed. Great. Update the Constitution. It is an undisp indisputable fact that by anyone who understands reality that things change. The world is not fixed, and one of God's favorite pastimes is striking down those arrogant enough to presume it is. We must not be counted among the fools who are caught unaware by the tides of change so, so sure that things will stay as they always have. Therefore, the best way to reset our control is a change with the times. The Constitution must be updated with brand new provisions and revisions allowed and designed to allow us more power. Additionally, it would be likely to be a very good idea to make sure that the people themselves are content, since if they see that they are cared for, then they will be less inclined towards rebellious thought. Up with the times? Good, 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 good. Come on, guns, 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 guns. Give me those guns. Ah, uh, yeah, we're almost there. We're almost there. Oh, Pakistan. Oh, and Afghanistan duking it out, huh? Good. Keep spending money on them. Let's see. Add a million dollars. I mean, we could, I guess. Military construction one. Cool. All right. Very nice. Max factories in the state would be probably pretty good. Resource efficiency gain. Let's do that as well. Just because we might be able to extract a little bit more aluminum, maybe. So, smugglers de detained at an Asturian port. Local authorities in the port town of Alvios today discovered a cargo ship had a secret compartment behind its normal transported goods, holding a variety of small arms and ammunition. With social tensions currently very high, anyhow, due to separatist tensions, this discovery may even spark enough controversy to lead the Union on a long descent down towards in a civil war. We therefore have to sort this situation with the minimal press coverage and wider government interference. It is, however, unknown whether this transport had originally come from which opens entirely new questions as well. The Breton crew we had questioned extensively gave us no further information except for backroom contacts and intermediaries which lead look to lead to nowhere. Perhaps a new mystery we will never solve, which is not not good. In which uh, it's still not super high. Cracking down I think is probably the most important thing. I really don't like the ETA here apparently. Who are these guys? I don't like any of these guys really to be honest with you. They're not vulnerable. Oh, please be vulnerable. I'm not sure how they become more vulnerable. Is it just with time maybe? Maybe with time, maybe not. I have no idea. All I know is that we need more guns. Wait. How do we get more guns? I thought we just... Oh, maybe we have to wait first. We're still content, which is nice. Reinforce the scaffolding. Oh, that might not be bad. But it only goes down by a million. Um, 
Okay, so effects when removed. Okay, that makes sense. Update the constitution. Very good. Rights and obligations of the Iberians. Let's see. Let's do that. Uh, the uh, diarchy question. The judicial question. Oh, let's do that one. So, one of the most important parts of the Constitution is how it addresses the citizens of Iberia. Within its provisions, it lays out the definition of an Iberian citizen, as obvious as that may seem, and the programs which are assigned to provide welfare where they are present. It also lists what they were obliged to do as Iberians. Collectively, these provisions are known as the rights and obligations of the Iberian citizen. Any state worth existing must care for its people. We must do the same. We must now begin to draft the changes relating to the rights and obligations, as to make sure our people are happy, provided for, and are aware of both who, are, who they are and what they must do. Good, and I will be, unfortunately, right back once again. My apologies once again, everyone. I don't really mean to do that, but I had to go and attend something else. But bombing in Madrid kills 18 and injures 82. God dang, son. What did we come back to? At about 22.30 hours in the, e in the evening, a massive bomb exploded in the El Descanso, La Casa de las Costillas restaurant in Madrid, causing a three-story building housing the restaurant to collapse. The building crashed down in about 200 diners and employees present in the restaurant, killing 18 people and injuring 82. 15 servicemen of the nearby Torrejon uh, Air Base were among the injured, but while being frequently frequented by air base staff, the time of the bomb occurred at an hour, few airmen typically were present. The police investigation concluded that the explosion was caused by a 13 pound chloride, chloride bomb planted near the bathroom of the restaurant, consisting of a chemical compound made up of potassium, sulfur, and chloride. Chlorate, a type of explosive said to be rarely used by the domestic Spanish terrorist groups. Hmm. Nonetheless, ETA Basque, separatist group, has claimed the responsibility for the attack. Do they have no shame? How many families have they torn apart over this petty quarrel? Now, stability gets worse, but I would imagine that actually, with all these bombings, that people probably would support the government over everyone else, but up with the times. You've called me for a meeting. At this ungodly hour, Salazar asked over the phone. I'd only take a glimpse out of the window to tell it to the time, as the only thing illuminates the dark skies of either city were the streetlights of Madrid and Lisbon. What is so urgent that it cannot wait another ten or so hours? The scuffle of Barcelona has me worried, Franco sighed, wiping his forehead with a hand. This is going to happen again. I know that these rat bastard separatists are better than you, and I know them well enough to tell you that this won't be the end of it. Do you think we can survive another Barcelona? I don't think so, Antonio. We need to update the Constitution, offer the people something that will calm things down for a while. Franco just kept speaking, only stopping to catch a breath. But, Antonio, we need to be united on front... We need to have a united front on this. We cannot show disunity on this question. Francisco, what are you on about, Salazar asked. Was it enough that we created the Iberian Council? Now you want to give them more concessions? Tell me, Franco responded, his tone growing agitated. Would you rather this union fall apart? Do you want the consequences if this peninsula melts around us? You know what would happen. We have to do something before it's too late. Help me out here, it's if only for your own sake. Damn you, Franco, I just want to sleep. Sleep is for the week, though. You don't need no sleep, except for during siestas. That's the only time we, we are allowed to sleep. Oh, the thief territory of Yugra. That's kind of interesting. Not going to lie, that's pretty interesting. Hopefully, in this, by the end of this episode, we will have the dam completed with attaching the power plant. But that's still many days off. Many, 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 many. But at least we're funding stuff, which is good. We're so conservative. Let's get some more reforms going, please. I think that'd be great for everyone here. Well, actually, 1.2, that's not bad. Actually, our growth went up 3.6. When did that happen? Yesterday, it was like 3.4, then we decreased it to 3.2, but now it's 3.6. I'll gladly take that. Great. Yes. Yes. Love it. Love it. Love it so much. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Let's see. Gun-wise... Samara unifies. Ooh, anarchy is winding down. Samara looking pretty nice. The Provisional Commissariat of Western Russia. Uh, the Free Aviators. Sverdlovsk. Divine Mandate of Siberia. Mm, looking pretty good. Not too bad. Ah, rights and obligations of the Iberians. Reform Seguridad Social. That actually might not be bad. Yes, that would be very good. Improve the style of majority opinion. The entire government does not handle the affairs of needs and wants. We've had a special provision set aside for that affair, along with an appropriately named department, the Seguridad Social. This program is a pride and joy of the government, not just for its values and public relations, but for its track record. No other program has ever had such a spotless record full of bureaucrats who seem to truly care for their special blend of paperwork. Even though it processes everything such a program could desire, healthcare and pensions, among many more, it is flawed. The Seguridad Social program has fallen behind in recent years due to its relative non-importance towards other factors. While some of the legislation dates back to the 40s, with only minor corrections performed, we must have updated it for the 60s, so that may fit the needs of a modern day society. 
and what matters to the people. Finally, the government was ready to discuss. It was not the entire government, of course, it was a council, representatives from several government agencies, and the Caldeos themselves. Remarkably, the entire council was present, which was the first issue the convention met. There were not enough seats for everyone. The convention solved its first issue in approximately three minutes with a couple of folding chairs. The first real problem of the convention was to where to start. They had a whole constitution to revise, after all, and even though they would reach all of it, they would not get it all done at once. Therefore, this is where bickering ensued. Following an eternity of arguments over petty and ultimately meaningless issues, Salazar put his foot down and ordered them to stop, start from the top. Basic needs. Let's get on with it. Go, go, go. We have many things to discuss and many reforms to accomplish. Bombing sabotages factories. Oh, God. A bomb was detonated yesterday in a small arms and munitions factory, causing a chain reaction, destroying a large part of the complex. Yesterday, a known CNT extremist parked his car in the factory he worked on next to the storage facilities. Upon reaching what seemed to be a safe distance, he detonated the explosive of an estimated size of 7 kilos, causing the chain reaction, whose shrapnel killed him instantly. Wow. The explosion was heard 10 kilo kilometers away and left an actual crater on the ground, not to mention that it collapsed most of the manufacturer's complex and shattered windows and buildings up to 3 kilometers away. The factory was mostly vacant at the time, the only casualty being the terrorist himself, however. Over 250 million... Pesatas worth of damage was inflicted. Oh, these god dang terrorist scum. Uh, I was told that yeah, we should continue probably cracking this down, so... Uh, we can't strike anything, though. Wait, is now possible to... Oh, we can destroy them? Current AAS resources. Ooh! Wait, 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 we can't do that. It's not possible, as the total cost of both weaken them and strike their leadership is 27. If we can get rid of this group, that'd be great. BTA. Uh, due to the support. Um, it costs two to lower this action. So now we can't. Uh, uh, just do regional crackdowns for every, pretty much everyone. Alright, cool. I don't know. Maybe we should focus on one group at first. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But they're not vulnerable enough for us to strike at their leadership, so we just probably have to give it time. That's probably what we have to do. Just give it time. Just give it time. But we are improving our social development, which is not bad. Only plus up by one, plus up by one. It's not much, but you know what? I'd rather have it than not have it, so. 1.188? Oh, 1.8 billion. I thought that B looked like an 8. My bad. Cool. Yeah, that's probably because we built another civilian factory. Great. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Expand quarterly funding? I think so. Yes. A small amount of money will be taken from reservers, res reserves, I mean. Yeah, cool. Content. For form social, very good. Maslow's basics. Colonial citizenship. Yeah, let's try that. While it may seem that the Iberian citizenship, citizenship is a very simple thing, it is not. However, the definition of a citizen is very simple. If a parent is an Iberian citizen, then the child will be an Iberian citizen. The location does not matter, nor the parent, only that one is a really a citizen. The new question has come up recently as a potential addendum to the rule. Natives from African holdings do not count as citizens, therefore they have limited rights and are not eligible for many privileges that a regular citizen would have. A political movement around has grown, and a few as a few politicians argue that the natives should be granted citizenship. They find that since they live in part of Iberia, they should be treated as Iberians or at least given some form of limited citizenship. We must consider this question carefully. Whatever happens, we just gotta get more reform. We gotta get more, 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 more reform. Ooh, look, roads. Do the people not like us? I, I prefer a stable society with plenty of roads. Plenty and plenty and plenty of roads. Oh, looks like we got rid of some of these guns. That's okay, we're still making 55 a day, that's really nice. Uh, IFVs, we're at minus some, that's fine, whatever. Uh, these are close air support units, which we obviously probably should make more military factors. Oh, what's going on? Oh, boy. Oh, we can add more money to the budget, which we honestly probably don't need to do. I think we're doing pretty okay. We need 5,000 more guns, of course. Anything down there? Not really. Cool. 36 out of 100. Yeah, decrease CNT support, support, support. Navarra governor bombed an outing. The governor of Navarra has been found dead. A restaurant in Pamplona was a victim of a bombing, rendering many dead. Equally gruesome was that uh, this is the same day that a party had reserved an area of the facility, leaving one to wonder what purpose such a cruel act could serve. It was only once the damage had been surveyed that the reasoning for the bombing became clear. The governor was there. Presumably, they were eating with some political officials when uh, the bomb was detonated near them, killing them all. From the damage to the building, it was a high yield. A great loss has occurred within the governor's death, as the man was very politically skilled and capable of efficiently stopping terrorism. With his political cadre dead with him, nobody remains to continue his policies. Effectively deadlocked, the void has now allowed the ETA to blossom, allowing them a better opportunity to commit attacks in the region. Killing a man while he dines? How dishonorable. Absolutely. Yeah, that's not cool, man. Ooh, army offensive against the ETA. Yes. Due to the critical situation in Basque Country, the army is standing by for full assault against the ETA. The offensive will decrease their activity, support, and supplies for each, but not, to lo but not lower than two. The bloody clashes will lower stability by one. 
while this reduces Iberia's stability in the short term, it might save Iberia in the long term. Um, right now, we have crippled sovereignty, that's fine. We're moderately stable. So we got... And we're thinking about dealing with the ETA, huh? The ETA right now. Oh, they got a lot of supplies, you know what? Two... Yeah, let's go ahead and do that, why not? We'll see what happens. We're gonna do it against them. Screw these guys. We need more guns, though. More guns, more guns. You know what? Screw everything else. More guns. Everything's going to go on guns right now. I'll leave one on each one of these, but we gotta get guns. Are we even... Ooh. Oh, that's a carrier, and that's... Tax up, that's fine. Now, that should really increase the amount of guns we're making. Oh, this gets higher and higher. 0 0.02, 0 0.08. It's about 60 guns a day. That's not bad. Just one fish of them. Ah, successful raid on the CNT sale. Great! Across the innocent looking shop front, up high on the roof of a secured apartment block lay a dormant sniper, his scope rusting on the entrance of the closed store. In the darkness of the chilly summer night, he could make out the shadowy figures of his comrades making their way silently to all the possible entrances and exits of the terrace hideout they had discovered. Finally, the call was given and he watched them storm in. Hearing the faint noises of panic shouting mixed in with a few sound shots over the radio and across the street. After five minutes, the street went silent again. The successful AAS raid on an earlier infiltrated CNT terrorist cell has brought great spoils in both in terms of information obtained after interrogation of material loot. The anarchists had amassed a good amount of material for their planned attacks on our union. This victory will be forgotten by history as a sacrifice of equally keeping the devastation that could have been per per perpetrated out of more important books. A swift yet groundbreaking victory for our security forces. Great. Uh, it hurts our resources, but that's okay. Uh, that's a necessary evil. Question of colonial citizenship. A growing movement in Congress has finally found itself sufficient support to debate colonial citizenship. Iberian citizenship is granted automatically to anyone who has a parent with Iberian citizenship at face value. It is simply, of course, a simple policy. However, it becomes significantly more compl complicated once more factors are factored in, such as colonial residents. The natives are considered non-Iberian and denied citizenship. Effectively, they are denied any of the benefits one would gain from citizenship. A clique on Congress has argued against this policy for several reasons. Some find it unjust to deny the native citizenship since they lived on the land before settlers, and others oppose it for more practical reasons. They desire to create a collaborative group within the native populations which, with which to sabotage the others, or simply to ease administrative strain. The end result is the same, to give all African natives Iberian citizenship. To say this argument experienced significant pushback is an understatement. Opposition has been fierce, with a great many wishing to maintain the status quo. The settler groups wish to keep the situation as it is, as the current laws work for very favorably for the Iberian settlers. Ultimately, it is still a call of the Caudillos. Uh, strengthen reformism. Worsen settlers' opinions of Franco. Global democracy. Citizenship is very ooh, complex. I like that one, but let's do this one. So, Franco, 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 fully sells our line, so be it. Colonial natives, though, are mostly Franco lines, so that's pretty good. That's pretty good for us. So, waiting down here, and then we need more guns. Pretty normal. And right now, we are at 38, so we barely got up a little higher. Maslow's Basics. There's an American psychologist by the name of Abraham Maslow. He has created a very interesting contribution to the field of a pyramid, specifically a pyramid of needs. Maslow details what a person requires for each of their needs, and as each is fulfilled, they move on to a higher level of the pyramid. The first level of the pyramid is a basic physical needs namely food, water, and shelter. It is important to keep the people of Iberia happy, for a satisfied worker is a productive worker. If we were to follow this pyramid, then the best way to make our citizens happy is to make sure that this basic level is satisfied. We must make sure that they are tended to then, so that we, they may remain happy and productive, and maybe vote for us. Or people that we like. Settler Association's protests. Oh, come on. As predicted, the settlers took native citizenship very poorly. The groups usually organized by colonial dominion, such as Guinea, uh, Morocco, and so on, have announced a joint proclamation with a near-unanimous decision to publicly protest the federal government's decision. They have declared their, our decision unfair to the natural citizens of Iberia with an emphasis on justice. Despite their claims otherwise, it is glaringly obvious, obvious that they are upset by the fact that the natives will no longer be treated as second-class citizens, and the new legal parity has upset those who look, took their supremacy for granted. The word of the Caudillos is still supreme, and it seems that about time that they be reminded of the finality of the government's decisions. You and them are equal. It doesn't even matter since they're pretty much already pretty much fully sells our line, so need to support the government. Great! After the joint declaration, some settlers even took to protest in Casablanca, venting their anger against the government. It seems as if the move would be a political expense and nothing more. To everyone's surprise, a group of natives showed up, counter protesting for the government. While the assembly did not come to blows, it came very close as law enforcement dispersed the protests. Even though this was a spontaneous action, it is representative of the sentiments within the native populations. It, we've been formally thanked by the several native organizations through the same channels as the settlers in what seems to have been spite for decisions to extend citizenship. I know I'm reading really fast, but it kind of has to be what it has to be. Colonial natives. The natives. Can I lower my native support, maybe? I think we already did that. Worse than natives' opinion. Ramp up colonial anti-terrorism measures. Uh, we'll do that one for now. Let's get through this in 10 days because this will end in 12 days. So, that'd be good for us. So, we can increase support again, which would be awesome. 
Uh, yep. P pretty good, pretty good. Just give me more guns. That's all we need. Oh, we're pretty, getting pretty close, though. And this will be done in two days while we have five days left. Oh, that's fine. And right now, the natives are mostly Franco aligned. Now, this is going to decrease support. So be it. Whatever. And saving, saving. Uh, th oh, they're still... Okay. Thank you. They're still mostly Franco aligned. Great. Redirect military resources. Go ahead, do that. Um, they're still content. The workers are... Excuse me. All right. All right, let's come over here. We can't strike them. We have 36 resources. Crack down. 35, that'd be fine. Crack down on them a little bit more. And then... Oh, it is possible to destroy these guys, but we can't. I want to do it, but they're not vulnerable enough. Ah. I'm going to keep these guys really low as, as best possible. So, native settlers clash causes de deaths. Oh, ditches have reached an all-time highs of burying mainlanders furious with their lack of legal primacy have resorted to less than lethal legal methods of intimidating nearby colonials. Bands of retornados, armed with makeshift weapons, have started to hunt down and beat colonials they find vulnerable. This escalated when the natives started to fight back, creating what was quickly named the Brigas Repentinas for their spontaneous and violent nature. As all incidents do, these fights begin to escalate from two or three, as many as ten to fifteen on each side. It is escalated again, though. After the murder of a retornado by a colonial native, riots have broken out in several major cities around the colonies between both. The Guardia Civil is on standby, and the death of tolls is poised only to decrease until the riots are put down Im immediately. Intervening to disperse. Ah, uh, lots of bloodbath. Settlers stand down. So be it. A crowd of men standing within a holding cell in some distant prison they know nothing of. They g get along quickly. They seem to have been soulmates in a way. The conversation eventually leads them to the great question, what were they in for? All present had the same reason, the disruption of common decency, but they all knew that they were protesting for the new citizen citizenship laws. They were eventually split up and incarcerated for their deeds. So that's like this. It had become very common, at least for a small while. As the Guardian Civil intervened, they arrested a large number of riders riding settlers. Following the show of force, most of them remaining surrendered. It seems like they won't be complaining about citizenship again, which means absolutely nothing to me because they don't even like me, so whatever. Maslow's basics, great. Collaborate with the state. Medium taxation. Silent worst majority. Ooh, oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. Eight hour rook day? Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. Content people. Uh, collaborate with each other. Why not? One of the most fundamental and one of the most flawed ideas of Bolshevism is the idea of the class struggle. They would put the wealthy against the poor, dividing mankind along arbitrary lines because of the words of some dusty manuscript. For our bare stability, we cannot allow anything of the sort to come to exist. The best way to discourage the idea is to enshrine the opposite in the Constitution. We must implicit, explicitly denounce class struggle for what it is, pointless division and conflict. Every class must recall that they are Iberians and that, in the end, they are of the same country, and so share a common destiny. They must collaborate with one another so that the state works as well as possible. Oh, actually, currently, right now, ooh, Maslow's theory is food. We are on what type of taxation? Low taxation. Okay. So now we're going to go up to medium. Ooh, that hurts. Ooh, that does not look great. It's okay, but mm, I don't know, man. Mm. Wow, that's a big old deficit. Holy crud. Anyway, food. A uh, politician taps a finger on his notes, eventually settling and running his finger along the paper as he reads it aloud. According to the psychologist Maslow, the uh, his pyramid of needs po posits a hierarchy of needs. Following its logic, the only way to get a happy, productive citizen is to make sure that these needs are fulfilled. His voice is loud but monotone. He clearly wants people to hear, though he doesn't seem very enthused himself. As I'm sure you all know, everyone needs to eat. Hunger goes on, even if you can't stop it. I do not know anyone who can provide for themselves, but I'm certain they exist. So my partner would like to present, he looks expectantly towards another politician, who starts to speak on cue. I would like to propose something to help the people get the food they need, so that they aren't left in the dust. A spe specially dedicated currency to be given out to anyone in the country that needs it. They can spend this on whatever they food they like, provided it is food and not luxury. The hall lit up with the speech, although eventually the Accentia representative spoke loud enough to be heard by all. Why would we need this? You know about the Axio Social, right? It uh, already has that duty for us. What's the point of bloating the state for a function we don't even need? Eventually the Candidos came to the final word on the matter. There would be a new food program or not. It already exists. Not questioning the regime's organizations will decrease reformism. Food stamps for certain people could help. Ooh! Strengthen reformism. Improve silent majority opinion of Franco, which I need a little bit. Poverty rate will go up. Expenses will go up, though, which is fine. Ooh, guns. Oh, but we already have that one done. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. So, right now, the silent majority leans towards Franco. Hmm. Conservative democracy... We'll do that one first. Oh, 
Oh, the first African DNI. King Hassan sat at his desk looking over what seemed to be an endless number of documents. He signed his name on one, and the black ink from his favorite pen shining brightly on the paper. Then, he looked to the next in the stack, another which seemed to be a signature on the bottom. Regardless, it never paid to be unaware. He read the paper itself, expressing yet more legal provisions and regulations that ultimately just added up to common sense and basic decency. His silent musing was interrupted by the clicking of cameras and the flashes providing a harsh incentive to keep looking down. He supposed that nobody would be unsure of how the paperwork worked. They found him again as he took the picture from, for his ID card, forcing him to keep the art artificially widened smile on it for even longer than he ever wanted. Better than to frown for the cameras, he supposed. The day came when the idea was ready to be received. Swamped by the press for what was undoubtedly an important day, he did his best to pretend to want to be here smile and held it up for everyone to see. So when asked him, how does it feel to be the first native to get citizenship? He knew what he had to say. Fantastic. Oh, nice. Hey, it's neutral. Right. That's pretty good. But now the rise of the Portuguese separatist group. Oh, no, 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 no. The unabating whispers of the AAS informants speak of a new, undis disturbing development. Separatist agitations begin to wrap up in Portugal of all places, previously thought of as being one of the regions of the Union not plagued by petty nationalism. Yet now signs show an increase in leftist organizational and political activity coalescing around the demand for an independent and socialist Portugal. The forces of the Portuguese left seem to be abandoning their differences and uniting across ideological and party lines, something that the Spanish left was not able to do truly 20 years ago during the Spanish Civil War. A single name and banner has been appeared around the cities in the form of the anti-Iberian posters and other propaganda. The FSLP, the Socialist Front of Portuguese Liberation. These developments will have to be closely monitored and dealt with before anything too drastic can happen. A uh, ghost from a very far away past from an undying border. Cool. Food. Uh, yes. Cool. Uh, all right, we wanted this to go by first. 13 days for this. Uh, we have nine days left, so we can do this one first, hopefully. 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 Cool. Let time go on. We can close that music player. 11 billion, not great, but we'll see what happens. Uh, no longer get effects of military austerity. Slash it. It's, it's just too much right now. Budget boost. Yeah, we're done with the budget boost. Um, we can't really afford that. Even now, it's over 2 billion, which is a bit extreme in my book. That's a bit much, not gonna lie. Uh, did we do it? It looks like we might have done it. Great. Food stamps. 44, not bad. Pakistan defeated Afghanistan? Wow. And let's see. The seller majority still leans toward us, which is fine. Maslow's theories, we... Thing, thing we don't debate? There's several other matters in which within the hierarchy of needs, such as sleep and reproduction. The man shrugged. There's nothing we can really do about those. Let's move on. Nobody disagreed. Ha <laughs> ha. Interesting. So, now we probably have Maslow's theories of water. Water, nothing on this earth is more important than water. No man could, hear, could deny that without water, and I see some of you have bottles of it now, we would be dead as well as a graveyard. The man continues, as important as water is the cleanliness of that water. Drinking filth is, will do nothing but making you sick at best. Without access to water more than what they strictly need and clean, you cannot expect to have happy, productive citizens. The man clears his throat. We need to make sure that the water is clean. Some areas of our beer have been left behind. They do not have clean water. We, I have some water regulations here, and if we assert them, then clean water will not be an issue. Another councilman objected, his, eyes, his voice high but safe. That seems very nice, but it's not necessary. Have you seen the news? We haven't had any cases of water poisoning or a cholera for our, or any other ailment that stems from bad water. We don't need to waste all our budget on measuring a pipe down to the first three drops through it. It'll be fine as it is. The debate continued for much longer than one than the ones hoped before. After a while, it was time for everyone to decide who made a better point. They concluded that water already runs through the tap. Establishing regulations would be very beneficial. Improve the silent majority opinion of Franco. Worse than the businessmen's. Oh. Poverty rate will continue to increase, which is not a bad... Yeah, we have not done the business ones yet, so... Ooh, that's not good. So, we gotta do that one. We're not even gonna wait. Um, how are we doing? Oh, only 78 days left. So, shelter. There it is, finally, the matter of shelter. Everyone needs a roof over their heads, and they'll live short and miserable lives. Or they'll live those short lives. I have nothing to say about this, so I'll let a colleague take their position. The man goes on as another speaks in a move that was painfully, obviously coordinated. And it's critical that we make sure all Liberians have housing. Not everyone has a house, and some lack the means of getting one. Even worse, some do, but they live in squalor and filth. It's true that we provide housing already, but our programs are not sufficient. I would propose intervention into the housing market with the specifics to be worked out later. It is our duty to make sure that people of a beer do not want one we can provide. But we can't provide, can we? Responded another councilman. For all the comprehensive programs you and your bunch keep proposing, you never seem to stop and consider the budget. Well, we're going to consider the budget. The army needs funding, or will dissolve from separatism. The dam needs funding, or will dissolve from the second greatest flood to scourge the earth. And all these minor issues will need funding, or will dissolve because all you can think about is how to spend every penny we don't have. With a sigh, Franco called both off. He knew nothing was going to come out of this conversation beyond what had already been said. Now they wanted him to settle the argument. Um, mm, ooh, more market liberalism. We must participate in the real estate market. Ooh, sell the majority again. Worse than businessmen. Oh, but poverty rate, poverty rate. I'm, th I'm considering slashing civilian spending right now. Because right now, we still have one, two, three, four. Oh, that's pretty good. Four is already pretty darn good. Keep making some more civilian factories. I, I love civilian factories, man. Really, really do. And we keep an eye on this. Oh, they are mostly Franco aligned. 
We're so close. 75 days, though. We probably can't get it done this, in this episode, though. Oh, big sadness. Big sadness. We've got plenty of guns, though. Plenty of guns for now. Collaborate with each other. Ooh, that's going to cost us more, probably. Medium taxation? Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, majority opinion business women don't like us now. It's very important that certain values are instilled in, into the population. They are not ideology, and in fact, they are far from it. Every good state has a good culture, the which of sort which must be carefully cultivated. While it is difficult to introduce these values at a mass scale, an important step towards such an outcome would be to emphasize them in the Constitution. First and foremost, parties with significant deputies or disputes should not turn to violence. We must pound this into their heads at every turn to prevent another battle of Barcelona. We need to encourage these groups to work together with the state rather than fight it. After all, it is much easier to create changes within the system than trying to overturn it. Absolutely. Cool. All right, we can't strike down anyone. Uh, I think the most important thing is just to lower activities as much as possible, I think. So, that's why we're going to continue. Oh, they just went back up. God dang it. There we go. Ah, so we a miss and us so, Catalonia and the Basque countries, both essentially regions of our union, yet infested with terrorists and separatist groups, have begun to a serious problem. The AIS is working tirelessly, scrambling after every hint and possible lead to track down these terrorist groups. Worrying out this danger disease is, however, proving to be less of a simple operation and rather a self-perpetuating cycle of re reseminations and violence. Security agents in Asturias, Asturias have uncovered a particularly bizarre phenomenon. It seems that the growth of armed separatist groups have not only been a product of Iberia's tumultuous political situation, yet have been spurred on by the arrival of more and more illegal arms shipments at the Asturian ports, divided up into small support and support small local groups as well as those further across the nation. Interrogation of the smugglers had so far failed to reveal much more about the situation, though it seems increasingly obvious that outside forces are helping spur on separatist radicalism inside our borders. Investigations, of course, will continue. I sound like a newscaster there. Ooh. No, no, no. Yes. We need more resources. Oh, my goodness. We don't get enough resources quickly enough. Whew. 13 days. Jesus, that takes so long. Franco speaks out against separatism. Good. Improved silent majority opinion. Worse than the regional nationalist opinion of Franco. There's nothing more worse, nothing in this world than terrorists, begins the Caldeo, a somewhat raspy tone under every word he spoke. They can follow me at every term, and I do not mean in terms of justice. I do not understand them, and I probably never will. Spain is a beautiful country, and when you bring the entire peninsula, then everything gets only more beautiful. I can see why my colleague is so pr proud of his mandate now. Franco allowed himself a smile, even almost a chuckle, before biting it back down to continue speaking. We ought to be united as one country, indivisible until the Pyrenees. These separatists, these terrorists who wish to break apart one of the greatest natural states to exist, to exist on God's earth. I come to you all today to beg you, do not allow these monsters leeway. They are just that monsters. If they even have so much of an inch, they will take the mile from you at gunpoint. I care about you all, which is why I am so committed to keeping you as well as possible. Never allow these criminals to destroy you. The Caldillo spokes for some time more, and wanders off stage to the applause of crowds. Oh look! Due to Franco's efforts since the Battle of Barcelona, resources for the AAS will begin to take up faster. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, please finish, please finish. 58 days, we have two months. I just don't think we can get there by the end of this video for that. But that's okay. We don't have to get it done by the end of this, this video. Uh, collaborate with the state. Low taxation becomes medium taxation, which is not good, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, they're full... Oh, the solid majority is fully Franco-aligned. Okay, so that's okay then. Now they're mostly Franco-aligned because we raise taxes. And the businessmen don't really care for us. Content people? Well, that seems like a pretty good thing to do. Uh, once we had completed the changes to the social side of the Constitution, it's decided that keeping them in planning limbo while drafting the other side of the Constitution would do nothing to aid the state in the view of the public, or the people. So we released the changes to the public, allowing them to see what we were planning in the new revi revision of the Constitution. Once it had begun to disperse properly, we took a survey to gauge public interest, or opinion. With all the results in, we've mostly gotten exactly what we desired. Truly, there's no people in the streets screaming our names in almost religious praise, but that is acceptable. The survey shows that the people of Liberia are pleased with their changes. It is not as great as we had hoped, but it is a great occurrence nonetheless. Yes. Expand funding. We gotta expand more funding. Come on, come on. Finish up, finish up. There we go. More. Immediately, just inject more into it. And for less than a week. Just let time go on as best we can. Yeah, we'll, we'll finish up the dam tomorrow. Which, finally, we can finish up the dam then. That'll be great. Great, 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 great. Oh, army offenses against the CNT. Lower Iberia stability by two. Ooh, decrease CNT activity supplies. Hmm... We're still moderately stable, which is not bad. Hmm. I'm going to assume it's probably a good thing to do. You know what? We're going to try it. It gets a CNT, because I really don't like the CNTs. Activity, supplies, and support. Uh, yeah. It probably would be probably worthwhile doing that. So be it. If not, well, we'll see what happens. So. And maybe we want to read one more focus, one more event before we call it an episode two. So, keep 
keep making a lot of those roads. We're actually getting a lot of them done. So let's read this last one and we'll call it an episode. Disturbing news regarding the Accentia. It is no secret in government circles that the Accentia has been on some unpleasant times. An agency performances down and the reports have gone progressively less detailed as a whole organization seems to be sputtering to a standstill. At least they have, for the most part, been attaining to an adequate number of separatists and are generally passable enough to let be. That is until distressing alerts to the, as the true function of the department surface. The whistleblower is very anonymous and the information traveled through very tight channels to make sure it was not intercepted. The level of allegations is very serious of extreme corruption, rampant nepotism, and a system designed to keep it all from leaking out. The most disturbing implication of all was the suggestion that some reports are faked, meaning the Accentia is not as effective as hoped. This is clearly a very serious issue, and making sure it is resolved, if there is something to resolve, will be a high priority. The first question is to where to start. There are many facets to Accentia, and only one can have sustained new scrutiny. It may be the fault of a horrible administrative class, which cares only for their own pockets. The military, military cannot be ruled out, however, as they have very close ties with the organization. No matter where the corruption might be, the most concentrated. If the rumors are true, then both parties will share some level of blame. The investigation has to be very careful. Who is most likely the responsible of the perpetrators? Ooh. Ooh, their integration with the military may be re relevant. You know what? I'm going to let you you guys decide. Should we do administrative issues clearly? Or their integration with the military may be relevant. But regardless, we're going to end today's episode there. I think we've done pretty darn well. It's 1966 already, and we're fighting terrorist scum as best as we can for now. But I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you all tomorrow as we will finish the dam and hopefully start spending less money. Thanks for watching, though, and have a great rest of your day.